All right, back uh, with the drum all the way from Perth at the Dome in Perth. And uh, with me I have Willie, who is the genius, and I mean the genius, behind all of this, all the staging, all the ideas. Where do they come from? It was nothing. Where do they come from? <laughs> <laughs> um, through discussions with the band, really. Yeah. We gave ourselves plenty of time, and uh, I guess about a year or so before we started the tour, we started right. putting the ideas together and seeing what we wanted to do this time around was to make it up all over again. Well, talking to Paul, I mean, Paul was saying of how, I said, my God, I mean, why take on something again so big? And he was talking about money and he said, look, I mean, rock and roll shouldn't think about money. It should be about entertainment. And, yeah. and, and, and if it can be entertaining, then let's go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, it's like, um, I said, well, I liken you to a, um, to that film, The Producers, with Zero Mistel. Yeah, I think yeah, it was Zero yeah. Mistel, Paul yeah. going, oh, how much is this going to cost, you know? Uh, but the equation of putting something like this together, Willie, is just enormous, you know? Yeah, and you, there are lots of different tensions because obviously the, you know, you want to do something completely new, just yeah. show people something they've never seen before. Yeah. Um, but of course you have the artists to deal with and what the band want to do and you mm. don't want to get in the way of the music and then you have the accountants to wrestle sure. to death with and this kind of thing. So it, it, there's a lot involved and it's, you know, it's part technical, part artistic and part diplomacy, really. Unlike, say, a Broadway show or any, any sort of musical or major staging where it sits in one place for maybe year, two years, three years or whatever, uh -huh. this is on the move all the time, not Absolutely. only just from country to country, um, but from state to state in such a short period of yeah. time. And indeed, um, I was laughing last week, we've just been in South America, because uh, this, this is the biggest video screen in the world. This right. is the biggest video screen ever made by our species. And not content with building it, we've driven it over the Andes, you know, right. so it is madness. Sadly, you'll see we're missing a piece today. Um, Oh, the, the, the sort of stage left end that looks a bit naked there, mm -hmm. um, there should be, you'll have to imagine a hundred foot high toothpick with a right. giant olive on the top of it, um, <laughs> because that got lost somewhere between here and Santiago, right. but it will be in the other Australian cities. Now, going back to the show itself, I mean, when I saw the Zoropa tour, uh, and I was saying to Paul, I mean, I saw it at the Yankee Stadium first off, and couldn't take in the enormity of the whole thing because of the whole set, I mean, it looks as if you're taking, like, LaGuardia Airport as part of the set <laughs> as well, you know? Philadelphia, I suddenly realised the magnitude of that tour alone, um, and, I mean, all the components were put together. Um, a challenge? Is it a challenge all the time for you? Yeah, well, to, to, to sort of outdo your previous Absolutely. thing. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But And oddly, I wasn't really interested in doing another video-based show right. unless it was going to be a significant development from Zoo TV, because I felt like with Zoo TV we'd pretty much done that. Yeah. Uh, but this is so much bigger but also much much simpler this is this isn't an intellectual show this is this is uh, a much more emotionally based show and much much simpler than Zoo TV in terms of its ideas um, so I'm very pleased with it you know and e even though it's very big I mean it's, this is much bigger than Zoo TV was um, its ideas and its sort of principles are, are actually very simple right um, and as I say I think it's much more successful as a show because it allows the music a lot more room Someone that's not, well, I mean, they're so, I mean, have they had a number one? Well, they've had number one, number one, number one, number one. Are they big in America? Yes, they are big in America. Even the film was big in America. I'm talking about those Spice Girls. And that, uh, that in fact, I, I've proposed to Ginger. I might as well tell you this now, because, as you know, I stepped with her on the plane on the way to the Channel V Awards in India. Now I'm proposing to her. Haven't got an answer back yet, but I'm sure it'll come. In fact, she probably thinks it's all too much. Here it is, the Spice Girls with too much. This will be the mill. <laughs> well, I have I go to the meetings, but I'm not the designer. Right. I don't I don't think it up. It's fun. You know? yeah. We actually enjoy doing that. Um, the band has always had two parallel careers, making records and making shows. Sure. And we love doing big shows. And the Zoo TV tour kind of um, brought us into 
stadiums, mm. if you like, um, for not the first time. The first time was the, the Joshua Tree yeah. Tour. And then we were really scrambling. We were making it up as we went along. Mm. Zoo TV was designed for stadiums. We really enjoyed doing things on a big scale. Mm. So this tour, we were always planning it to be a massive visual spectacular. I remember with the Zoo TV Tour, the first time I actually saw um, that uh, the first time I saw that presentation uh, was, and I feel very lucky because it was in New York and it was at that wonderful old, uh, the Yankee Stadium, is it? Yankee Stadium. Yeah, which yeah. had the old yeah. building, the aircraft were flying the, the in. The cathedral and, of baseball. Yeah, it was like as if you, like this set was made for the Zero Tour, the background and everything like that. Um, but it wasn't until I went to Philly, uh, uh, Philadelphia, a couple of days later on your invite, that I saw the magnitude of the stage itself. Uh, the sets, you're actually doing an MTV link that day, etc. Um, that I suddenly said, well, you can't get any bigger than this. You surely cannot. I mean, this is a television network within itself, you know? Well, this is bigger. And you have gone bigger, you know? This is bigger yeah. and more complicated and more fun. Mm -hmm. And I think an even better show than that one was. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, this will be very hard to beat. Right. But as I keep saying to people, it's not the Olympics. Mm -hmm. and there isn't a championship. Yeah. I don't think anyone else is doing shows um, as good as this, and I can't see any of the of the new groups. Um, even I'm, I'm quite surprised none of them seem to be very interested in production. Right. And right. The sort of spectacle of rock and roll. I mean, rock and roll has always been spectacular, mm. and uh, the best artists have always understood that the 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 parallel. Um, track on which they should be traveling is a, a visual one as well as a musical one. Almost ironic that one of the members could be called Edge because you're always now looking for the Edge and somehow seem to find it every time. Where other bands, um, certainly established bands of, of, of you know of many years, have lost what you'd have to call maybe the Edge. You know? Yeah. How do they keep finding that Edge? Well, they're the same four people, and they are. They were always very competitive. Um, Unlike, if you think, the, think about it, the generation of bands that were around when we started out in 1980, there were The Police, The Clash, The Talking Heads, The Pretenders, Television, um, I'm sure I'm leaving out a couple, Blondie. Mm -hmm. Well, that was our generation of bands. And one after another, in a very short period of time, they all broke up and became, in some cases, solo performers. Sure. Um, you two of that generation of bands are the only ones who stayed together and developed the power of the rock band mm. in 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 their time and from certainly to my way of thinking there is nothing like um, the sound and the sight mm. of four guys who've been basically in the same band in the same gang together for 20 years in U2's case now those same four right. guys you know their names you know their faces and they're up on stage making an enormous noise playing playing songs that you grew up with, um, songs that resonate for you.